And that's the lasting impression that Aldo walks away from. That's the thing. I mean, it's like really seared onto my... One thing um, that was hard in the edit was... was in the edit, there was a... How do we... A, a we have, we had an Al Collin. Mm. Well, it turns out that the guy, uh, Dan, that was on my side of the stage is like a you friend of mine. You know yeah, Dan, yeah, yeah. Dan Trapp, an yeah, yeah. amazing cinematographer. But he didn't, he didn't know me at the time. No. But he now filmed, we're great he friends. He filmed you yeah. like you were friends. Though. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was just that Home videos. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it was just, well, there was a lot but, of Al. Al but I've, I've, I had a camera as well, and like, for the first hour, I, I volunteered to go in on boring cam, which was like the, the safety shot of the whole stage. And the big when wide it, shot. When it got to the second half, I was like, I really want to go on stage. And I found it hard not to film Al because Thanks, he, man. He's, uh, he's, he's the only one who moves. <laughs> <laughs> but to go back to what you were saying about like what made the sort of difference. Uh, sorry, gotta stop you there. Between back to the Courtney <laughs> loves draws. Right. But you know, like point. when when Will and Dylan were sort of giving instructions to the cinematographers, they weren't saying you know just like keep it safe or whatever. They're just saying just shoot whatever's interesting, shoot which I thought, yeah. which I thought was it really comes across with seeing it again just on the big screen there, like. Just some very strange moments that probably wouldn't have come up in like another normal yeah, I mean, that, kind of film. That was film. Sort of, super important to us that it wasn't just going to end up being this sort of, you know, taping of the of, of the show. This sort of like you see a lot of concerts and they just look exactly the same regardless of what whatever the band it's is. It's a big crane. That comes yeah, across there's, 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 there's a formula. So you shoot you shoot the same shots and you it's cut. It's kind to of the, the point that I started to, like when we first went to scout Madison Square Garden <laughs> to get it back yes. to a story I was telling earlier. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think it's, no, no, it's no. like a comedy routine, bring it back, circle back, circle no, back. When we first arrived at Madison Square Garden, Bon Jovi were in there, and they were, they were setting up for a show. And they had like three techno cranes, you know, like the cameras that just swoop over the crowd. And they had a, a dolly that went 360 around the crowd. And we were like, this is sort of the exact opposite of what we can afford to do for this show. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it was also the exact opposite of what we would ever do. Like, we just wanted to be in amongst the musicians, be in amongst the crowd, and just make something that was authentic to the experience of being there, I guess. It's and not about perimeters, it's about being in there. Yeah. Well, exactly. it's also like, if, if you want it to look awesome, and I'm putting that in quotes, <laughs> then you should put a crane that sweeps across the crowd, yeah. and then right as the singer leans back, and it's like, yeah. You loop your foot up to the head. But I think it was better to, like, I feel like it's better that it's more like what we experience. Yeah. Like, more as a band. Like, it, it looks more like a street fight. Like, if you can stand there and film it, it I mean, makes that was, sense. you know, minus the depressing <laughs> nausea and sudden shock of sweat yeah. and blood. blood yeah. yeah. I, just, I just think if you can be there and see it from that angle, that makes sense. If you have to be on a harness swinging across a thousand people, like then but how do you make it seem like a better show than it is? <laughs> well, I think it you just, just has play to seem well. Like slightly I guess. Less of the show, yeah. It? How many cameramen yeah. did you have in the crowd, and how many were stage? We had yeah, eleven had, total, yeah, right? And then we, we had sort of mixed them up. So we, we had, had three them. cameras above the crowd, and uh, one of them was completely redundant. <laughs> yeah. One yeah. Was, <laughs> was trapped by balloons. Yeah. yeah. And so, <laughs> so, and we had it in the editing room. So we were doing the live stuff. We'd be like, "What's camera four doing?" And it would just be, "It's yeah. balloons pressed against the lens." <laughs> can I now admit? That, that was my idea. <laughs> I didn't think. Yeah, yes, you can. I didn't yeah. think. I thought about one shot. I thought about the balloons being dropped. I thought, that's going to look fucking amazing. The camera's there, <laughs> and they dropped down. I didn't think about the other three hours where it's just <laughs> there with like. Or about the net that we no, stuck to the camera yeah. as they try and fall. So out. I fully yeah. admit that I invented the retarded shot <laughs> that never got used. By the way, like, uh, congratulations, John. Just had a, a child. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. You guys. For very clear reasons, it's been yeah. taken away from him, but... Uh... Just come from the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> you look amazing, by the way. They say childbirth like, takes a while to get over, but... You're glowing. Well, yeah, thank I you. I want to bring Keith in here, if that's all right. Doing... Keith? Keith! Keith! Hello. Keith. Hey, um, I want to ask you what your reaction was when James told you that that was it. That Great wanted... relief. <laughs> <laughs> Great, 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 great relief. It was wonderful. It was a wonderful day. No, I thought it was the right decision. Sorry, what? What was that? I the thought right it was decision. the right decision. You thought it was the right decision. Why? 
I just thought it was, you know, I, 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 th I thought it was a class move. It was a good thing to, uh, to end at that point, rather than kind of continuing on into morphing into something different. I mean, I mean by the way, this is uh, Keith, this, is, this is, was our manager. And uh, in a rare rock and roll scenario, it was basically just Keith and I. There's no, we have no, assist, there's no assistants or nobody else. There's no management team. It was just us. And uh, you've just witnessed the decision-making process. You asked why, and he was like, yeah, it just seemed good. <laughs> so, no, so people ask us, like, people ask me, like, you know, why'd you end the band? I was like, it just seemed funny. It was a good idea. <laughs> and th that's the kind of dialogue we would have. There was no third person being hyper-rational. So thank you, Keith. Well, that's not, that's not quite true, though, is it? Because, I mean, you, you, you were looking at all of the festivals that were going to be coming up after that point. Oh, yeah, and they like, looked like bo seeing bo it boring. Seeing stretching out, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. through <laughs> June, July, August, September, but kind Keith, of going Keith, through. You want well, it, 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 you know, I, I mean, yeah. I mean Al, Al brings up a very good point, you know, because, you, you know... Um, <laughs> hi, Al, I can't actually see you, but I hope all you're all right. right. You can't see um, us? I, I mean, one of the... You know, one of the things I always thought was great about LCD was that at, um, at base it was, had this great kind of anarchic and spontaneous vibe and feel to it. And as soon as when you start having like, you know, two buses and three trucks of gear and the crew is really big and suddenly you have an overhead, it becomes a different thing. And either you embrace that and become kind of Bon Jovi or Radiohead or whatever, or you kind of say, no, this is it, you know? There's two options. There's two options. <laughs> <laughs> two things that are almost identical, Bon Jovi or Radiohead. Well, you know, I, you know I, actually, at that level, they are. Yeah. How do we know that's Keith? He didn't swear once. <laughs> Can we turn yeah, well, you know. <laughs> um, but James, was there, a, was there a catalyst for that decision? Was there something, some time, someone was... Well, I mean, I'll, I'll say what the catalyst was. If we, have, we still have Keith, don't we? we have, He's there. He's there. We can yeah. click on him again. My catalyst, the catalyst was that uh, Madison Square Garden wouldn't give us a second night. And I wanted a second night. And they didn't think we would sell it out. Or not sell it out. They didn't think we would sell it at all. And they tried to put... <laughs> very large artists as support. Bon Jovi. Well, the, as filmmakers, they were, they were really horrible to us as well. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, and it, this is nothing to be proud of, but we're the cheapest show ever to get filmed at Madison yes. Square Garden. So. <laughs> yeah. but they didn't believe, they were, they were just sort of like, and I was like, I think we will do just fine. <laughs> and then I was like, and then even when we said, I was like, it's the, the last show, I'll say, it, then fine, fuck you. If I make it the last show, we'll sell it out, I think. And I thought maybe <laughs> in like a few weeks we'd sell it out. And, uh, uh, and that's kind of a catalyst. It was sort of like, go fuck yourself, was a bit of a catalyst to end the band. <laughs> that is my... Good idea. Job <laughs> and how I basically screwed it to a bunch of union guys. It was like, there yeah. was your, it was your kind you. of remember Yeah, guy, totally. Remember, we got one guy chucked out. You got, I got one guy chucked out. Yeah, one guy that worked there chucked out, for being a jerk. But he you, made, you he made fun of the spaceships. Yeah, he made fun of our card. <laughs> he made fun of the most easy to make fun of thing. We made the cardboard and tinfoil spaceships. Which you see in the, in the concert film, not in. Not you won't in see it. Which is in, available on DVD from. Our, <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, so we, we made these shitty cardboard spaceships. And a friend of ours did them really quickly, and they were awesome. And we were loading them up, and the guy's like, I don't know what the fuck you're smiling about. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's bullshit. And I was just like, really? I mean, first of all, this is clearly bullshit. Like, <laughs> like tinfoil spaceships. It's kind of the point. Yeah, it's kind of the point. We're at Massacre Garden, we built tinfoil spaceships. Uh, I know you're used to much better $120,000 nonsense that is easily forgettable, but we built $25 tinfoil spaceships. Those spaceships go right across. There. <laughs> he was so, he was very upset. And he was insulting the art director who had made them. And was, people were putting in a lot of time and you know, not, not making a lot of money. Um, so we had him removed from the building. Um, which was, we, but we also realized, I was like, yeah! And then I realized he got paid full 
you yeah. know, scale. Anyway, <laughs> he was just like, cool, I can watch the hockey back here. <laughs> he wasn't doing anything anyway. You, can, you can't beat a union guy. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But you, you use the word retired in the film, which I don't believe. Well, no, we retired. I mean, uh, Pat, Nancy, we're not playing shows, right? As far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> Less Unless Pat, you're just, keeping are you still make. making music together? I, I mean, if, uh, no, I mean, not technically. I mean, look. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no, there's, the LCD sound system was a couple of things. It was me going into a room and making records. It was us as a band, like, be going and playing shows. It was an entity that was signed to a major label and made videos and did stuff. And it was a an object that had a relationship with a fan base. And that, was, that all combined was a train, and that was a train that we all never signed up for. Like, nobody in the band signed up for it, me or anybody. Uh, and so we just got off the train. Now, if Nancy's making a song, I would feel weird if she never called and said, uh, we, let, do you, you know, let's do something, or if Pat's working on something, I would do something if I was doing something. Mm. Um, but we're just returning back to what formed the band, which is a miasma of friends and time and a little bit of headspace to just hang out, um, rather than being in a band that has to make a record and go on tour and do a video and yeah. go on tour and go on tour and shit blood and go on tour. <laughs> so, yeah. I have Courtney Love washing her pants in your toilet. It may, um, not, it may not have been her pants. I, I can't remember. <laughs> We've, uh, we put a thing up on your, your Facebook page about getting some questions. You in put something up on my Facebook page? Yeah, really, really. I don't know if you have the Cody password. Loves pants. Um, I haven't got those. <laughs> it's just some questions, and, and there's a lot of similar stuff coming in. Um, lots of people around the UK want to know, what's your favourite UK gigging memory? Do you have a favourite UK gigging memory? Pat? Pat UK, um, complete United Kingdom, Pat. The entire Not just United London. Kingdom. <laughs> what? I think oh. it was uh, hanging out with uh, the little alcoholic elf, Marky e. Smith, in Manchester. That was pretty oh. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy, do you have one? You can't be that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. Maybe the first time we played. Uh, Trash play Oh, played, uh, played Optimo. In Glasgow, yeah. Optimo. In Glasgow. I, I was in the audience for that. Were you really? Yeah, yeah. Wait, what Oh, we... actually, you yeah, know what? Was, I take good. that back. I take that back. I know. <laughs> you take it back? What? Wait, what? No, no, I take it. My, my favorite UK show moment actually involves Al. Oh, thanks. Can I just have to make a technical request? The camera that's on you guys, can we just move it that way? Because I can't see Al. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, how do we... There we go, there we are. Yay! James, now I can't see you, but whatever. Um, so, no, we played, a, <laughs> we played the show in Brighton uh, at the Concord, I think. And it was the first time that I had met Hot Chick. And, uh, and they were all there at the show to see us play. And um, it was a really crazy... <laughs> show like lots of kids and the stage was really low and like my stuff was like right on the edge and oh, at yeah, the time yeah. in Concord in Brighton oh yeah I remember that yeah, yeah and I still had all my gear on like a keyboard stand and like a guitar case and everything was held down with like, duct tape and okay, gaff tape yeah, okay. whatever and everything was going crazy and people started pushing and shoving and like grabbing my rig and trying to like knock it pull it down and Al got between me and them and just like like put his arms out against the stage and like pushed his back into the audience and just created this safe like, space, this barrier yeah. <laughs> between me and the crowd. And I, you know, I wouldn't have wouldn't have made it through the rest of the show without you, Al. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, oh. Oh. 